sick. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome to another reputized video. Cabin Fever came out in 2002, it was directed by Eli Roth and stars Ryder Strong, Jordan Land, and Serena Vincent. And it's all about a group of friends who resort to a cabin in the woods where they fall victim to a flesh-eating virus. Alright guys, starting off with the positives. The lighting and the cinematography work by Scott Kevin was done really well. I noticed that I, as the movie progresses and it got darker, so did the lighting. And I thought that was a pretty nice touch. Interesting fact, at the beginning of this movie, when they make their way onto the cabin of the woods, they're in the truck, and if you look really closely, in the rear view mirror, when one of the characters are talking, you can actually see the TP. You can actually see Scott Kevin in the back with the camera. And he's like this, looking through the camera and make sure the cinematography was done well. You can actually see him in the back. And in my research, Eli Roth noticed that in the editing process, but he wanted to keep that in because apparently every single movie that Eli Roth ever worked on, he always kept him in the background for some reason. I, I don't know, but uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting fact. I had to literally go back and catch that once I was doing my research after I finished the movie. And it, it's it's there, clear as day. I had to pause it, but it's there. Nathan Barr's score was done pretty well. He gave it that eerie feel that you were in this dangerous situation that you couldn't get out of. Eli Roth's direction. As, as many of y'all know, he is a big time horror director other than the Death Wish that came out back in January and The House with the Clock in the Walls. Other than those, he's always been the horror guy. And I think that's why he's changing his tune in movies now. But he's a pretty good director and um, I, get a, I give him props. He created something original with this at the time. He did something and I think he did it fairly decent. And last of the positives, there was a few throwbacks to the classic slasher genre like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's a shot in this movie where you see a woman walk up to the cabin and it shows her butt. It's it's like a, a shot of just her walking and it's like a shot up from her butt. They did that a lot in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. So that was a nice throwback to that and there was some throwbacks to the Friday 13th series, like, you could hear the crickets and the creepy sounds in the woods. You didn't know what was going to happen. Friday 13th, right there. And maybe some of Halloween, but mostly Friday 13th, because most of those took place in the woods. Halloween was just everywhere. But it was mostly Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Friday 13th that they threw back, and I thought that was pretty cool. Alright, the negatives, guys. I didn't quite care for the characters. They were dumb. They were idiots. Stupid. They, they made the dumbest decisions like they always do in horror movies. I know we're all human, and it's and it's, it's our humanity that makes us act this way, especially if we don't, if we're going up against something we don't understand. It's in our nature, unfortunately, to panic and make things worse in certain situations, unless you're really smart. So, okay, I get that aspect of it. But you have to be smart in order for you to actually survive anything in a horror movie. And most people never does. In these horror movies, I think the filmmakers are just saying, hey, it's human nature. We have to panic. We have to make things worse so that we can die off. That's why we have stupid people doing stupid things. And this goes along with what I was just saying. that Their actions were idiotic. There was a bunch of scenarios I could have seen where... They could have survived this if they weren't surrounded by a bunch of other outsiders that were just jackasses. And that wouldn't help at all. All that was in their mind was their own selves. It's like, it's all about me. I don't care about helping you. Uh, get the hell away from me. Blah, blah. And that was another problem I have with this movie. I, I know Eli Roth's intentions was to keep it as confined as he could for these characters to make it a good horror movie. I get that. But realistically, come on. <laughs> All you had to do was call the damn hospital 
And all this would have been resolved earlier, but then you would have had a movie, so touche. Some of the scenes felt rushed. I just couldn't get into it because some of them, like the way they were playing it out, some of the death scenes, it was gory in some scenes, which I give it that, but some of the other scenes, it just felt rushed. And I just, I couldn't really get into it. Plus the ending sucked without ah, getting into it. This came out back in 2002, so most of y'all probably already seen it, but for those of you who haven't, I will not spoil it. I'll just say that it could have ended better. It did end up in a cliffhanger, like they were going to make a second one, but I just, I didn't like the way they presented it. They could have reshot it, like they reshoot most endings nowadays. Halloween, for example. This movie, it felt okay for a hardcore horror movie. Like I said before at the beginning of this review, Eli Roth created something that was original at the time. And it was eerie. They're just dealing with a flesh-eating virus that nobody knows where it exactly came from. That was another detail that they forgot to leave out. I mean, it started with this hermit getting it from his dog that died. But how did the dog get it? Where did it, where did it originate from? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> It, 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 it never explained that, but I guess that could go along with the mystery of what the director was trying to tell in this movie. So, touche there too. My final thoughts on this, it was okay. I wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but for those of you who actually necessarily wants to see it, if you're looking at this review and thinking to yourself, well, oh, maybe I want to check this movie out for yourself, please do so. I always encourage that. Be your own critic. But I would recommend probably watching it on TV. If you have Netflix, it's on Netflix. That's what I actually watched it on. Watch it there or watch it on your Fire Stick or whatever. That'd be the only advice I could give you. I wouldn't go out and buy it or whatever, although some places might have it for like $3 because it's such an old movie. And I, I guess that's okay, but I wouldn't even waste a dollar on it, to be honest. Cabin Fever gets a C. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really do appreciate it. For those of you who did, like, subscribe, get reputized, share this video even. Make sure to subscribe to The Reactor, Reactions Galore, which is in the description down below. And also like The Repster and The Reactor on Facebook, which is also down below as well. Stay tuned for more reviews coming soon. Peace to Repact.